Welcome back to my channel. My name is Brianna Marin, and today we're going to be making a basic vocal chain template in GarageBand. Before we get started, let's go over what equipment I'm going to be using today. So first and foremost, the star of the show is clearly the MacBook Pro. It's the most basic MacBook Pro. I think it's like a 13 inch or whatever the smallest is. I'm also using an external SSD drive. It's a Samsung SSD drive. I'll link it in the description box below. The Bayer Dynamic DT770. There's something just about the way my vocal sound when I'm monitoring myself that I just love. And I also feel like my mixes come out better personally for me when I'm using these headphones. Um, I do have Audio Technicas as well. They're my backup if something goes wrong with my current headphones. Today I'm gonna be using the built-in mic on the MacBook Pro. You can also use a USB mic if you so choose. I would love to do a future video using a USB mic, so comment below if there's a specific one you would like to see me try out with this computer or even my iPad. The world is our oyster. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so that's what we're gonna be using today. Let's move on. I'm going to find a track to just kind of toy around with so I can hone in my vocals. Okay, let's open up GarageBand. Let me create a new session. So I'm just gonna use uh, an Artie, an Artie, <laughs> an audio track. Input is already correct, input one. I want to hear my instrument as I play and record. So basically monitoring, I want that on. I hear sound from my external headphones. Everything looks correct to me. So let's create. Bop, bop, ba -da -da -da. So we can, oh, okay, so the mic is already turned down to negative 24 dBs, but I wanna hear it full throttle. So I'm gonna go up to, all the way up to zero. I'm gonna import that track that we just decided was the bomb.com. By the way, this track is by Dream Life Beats, my musical partner in crime. Ooh, something I would like to show you really quickly. I like to have all the info up at this tippity-toppity line correct, um, just so I know that me and GarageBand are talking to each other properly and we're both on the same page. The tempo is already notated here, thankfully, by the producers. I love when producers like put all the information that we need to know on the track. So it's already at 90. Had that information not already been available to you, there's a few ways you can figure out the tempo without pulling your hair out. <laughs> One of my favorite free ways to do this is going to, I think it's tap tempo, but sometimes I literally just Google tap tempo and see what happens. Yeah, that's the one I use. So what you would do is play the song and then press a key on your keyboard along to the beat. And essentially it will work out the average BPM based on how you're tapping I'm snapping, but as you're tapping the B on the keyboard. So that's a cool, quick, free way to find the BPM of a song. My favorite way to find the BPM and the key in one go is using Mixed In Key. Mixed In Key is not sponsoring this video. I, I literally just use Mixed In Key every day. So you open it up and I love this. So from anywhere on your computer, you can play a song and it will listen and find all the information you need. Let's click listen. There you have it, it says A minor, 180 BPMs. Obviously half of that is 90. It just depends on how you want your metronome to respond to you. This top area, we already put our tempo in at 90 um, and we're gonna come over to A minor and put the whole entire session in A minor. I'm also gonna take this time to turn the instrumental track down at least negative six dBs to make sure the track isn't overpowering you and you can actually hear what you're trying to sing. 
Okay, so now we are looking at our audio track. Right here below on the bottom is where we're gonna start messing with plugins to make sure our vocals sound good. First, I'm gonna turn on the noise gate because using a computer mic is not the best idea. So we wanna cut out as much dead air as possible. So while I'm singing, it's gonna capture all of that, but if I stop, it'll cut all of that ugly dead air out. I'm sure a lot of you know what noise gates are. So going up all the way to 100, the gate's gonna allow everything through. If you go all the way down to one, it cuts everything out. And you don't wanna sound like a choppy phone call either, like this. So 50 is a good starting point. I'm at negative 49, I'm okay with that. But that is the first step on our vocal chain, at least pertaining to GarageBand on your iPhone, your iPad, or in this case, a MacBook. Let's move on. I'm gonna come all the way down over here to the bottom, click plugins, scroll down. It's got that noise gate that we already turned on, and it looks like it has a basic compressor that's been bypassed and a channel like EQ, let's look at it. Okay, so there's nothing happening on anything over here, but they've given us these bass plugins just to start. We've got also a master echo and a master reverb. Anyways, moving on. So after the noise gate, I would like to add a little bit of pitch correction. It can help speed up your process because you're not doing 150 million takes trying to find the right note and sing it perfect every single time. Because sometimes we just have little flaws in a take, it's not something major, and the pitch correction can kind of just compensate for that. Or if you want to do something stylistic and robotic, you can crank the pitch correction all the way up to 100 and get that T-Pain effect. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, so if you want to use GarageBand's built-in pitch corrector, you unfortunately won't be able to find it from literally just scrolling over to plugins and clicking pitch. It just gives you these two effects, pitch shifter and vocal transformer. Um, which are two really cool effects, but it's not what we're looking for in this case. We have to come over here in this top left-hand corner, click scissors, and now it's giving us the option to toy around with pitch correction. So there's nowhere that allows you to insert what key of the song that the pitch correction should be following because we've already inserted it up in this top corner. So it knows that we need to be in the key of A minor. So in this case, you can click limit to key and that's gonna mean that when you're singing, the pitch correction is saying she's only allowed to sing in A minor and it's gonna make sure that every note is within A minor. And so if you don't like that, you can unselect it I personally like it because I feel like it locks you into those notes. <laughs> so yeah, that is just a quick look at GarageBand's built-in pitch correction. You can turn that on. You can also download tons of other external auto-tunes that would work great. There are free ones and there are paid ones. I personally love on Taras. They're very well known for their auto-tunes if you haven't heard of them before. So I've already installed this on my computer as you see right here on Taras. They have a whole bunch of different kinds. Yeah, let's rock with this. So this one isn't connected to GarageBand the way the built-in pitch correction is. So we have to come up here and select the key that we want to be in, A minor. Um, the retune speed is the same as the pitch correction. Um, except it's reverse, so zero here is gonna put you in complete robotic mode. 20 is definitely a good starting point. Most of the time I'm at like 30 because I feel like it's quite natural. I'm trying to humanize up just a hair. Just to review quickly, we have added a noise gate, which I currently have bypassed. Now we have pitch correction, just to kind of help us speed up a little bit. You could use the built-in pitch correction from GarageBand, or you could use an external one. I've chosen Antares Auto-Tune EFX. And now I would like to EQ. So it already has applied an EQ here for us. I just want it placed before the compressor. I want it um, EQ before I compress. So let's click on it. And so far there's 
they haven't done anything here this is all we have i've been toying around with this for a bit and i find since i'm using this macbook mic that some of these settings that are already in here actually work pretty well maybe give or take a few tweaks based on what you're doing so i set this to pop vocal it made me sound warm like i'm kind of feeling myself <laughs> You can hear a slight difference when I turn on the EQ with pop vocals on and here is my voice with pop vocals off. You probably need headphones to really hear the difference. And we don't have to get too crazy with the tweaks right now. I'm kind of setting this up so that when I'm ready to record, I just have something nice to monitor because I think I've mentioned in past videos before when I record I kind of like to feel like it's mixed already even though it's not but it can sound really good in your headphone so yeah I'm gonna leave it be for now I can't promise that later I won't tweak it so after that channel EQ I'm gonna go ahead and add a compressor so this is their compressor and once again they have all kinds of cool settings. So let's rock with studio vocal. If this is what you want, this is a great place to stop. For my chain, I would prefer to use a Waves compressor. So I have the CLA 76. And typically like r &B, you're gonna have like a fast attack and like a slow release. And we can tweak these once again later. Nothing is set in stone. We really shouldn't be doing these settings <laughs> without music, but we're creating a vocal chain and a vocal chain template for me is a great starting point. We probably should also add a de -esser. That's also typically a standard tool that you would add to your vocal chain. So let's find a de -esser. So that's just gonna, oh, GarageBand doesn't like it. Okay, so the de -esser is just going to help us not have a bunch of happening um there's also a million other reasons and ways to use a de-esser but like i said for the sake of we just want to get started and create a basic template let's put that de-esser on there and we likely want to de-s before we compress okay okay so now we have officially made it to the fun stuff let's check this echo box um and turn this up let's go to edit edit echo and reverb settings and as you see, it opens up this little situation for us. Oops, I accidentally turned it down. So we've got our time, how many times it's going to repeat, the color and the volume. There's also, um, right here at this little top area, there's settings. So you can just click them and play with them. Like, I love experimenting with stuff. We have half note. Half. Half. No. No. Okay, let's go back to 16th. 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 16th you can kind of hear the 16th is like it's like a slap it reminds me of like a live show uh eighth eighth, eighth. eighth. no no eighth. eighth so you can kind of see what those do i like the quarter note for now i might start singing and absolutely hate it so now that we have our echo let's turn on reverb da 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 mm-hmm So we're going to go back up to this top area where it says master echo. We're going to click master reverb and same thing. We get these little controls over here, the time, color, and the volume. But I have to say, I kind of like where we are right now. I would say we have a pretty cool vocal chain happening right now. You can see right over here in this left hand side uh, under library, we have all these patches but basically they're just saved templates so you can go through and you can see GarageBand's saved templates which also are pretty cool i've used them before in previous videos but user patches is what's gonna save you time i'm not gonna always want to sit here and do this whole process that we just did together now we have our whole little vocal chain we can click save i'd like to know that it's my mic max i'm just gonna say mic max radio ready save hello 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 i've created a brand new track this track is exactly as we started at the beginning of the video it has a compressor and a channel eq and the echo reverb and noise gate options available to us but i'm going to click over on user patches click mac mic radio ready because that's the one we just made 
and bam, it's gonna apply everything we just created onto this new track. The only thing that's not activated is our echo and reverb. So all you gotta do is just turn that up to your liking and let's toy around with this track. And also it'll give us a chance to see if we need to make any tweaks to this template. If it did turn out, if it lay in our love, say you will in love, turn out If it did then I'll know, say you will. So we have made a basic vocal chain template in GarageBand on our MacBook using only the MacBook mic and I personally think it sounds pretty good. Uh, I would use this for scratch vocals or sending ideas when I have nothing else to record on. I also think this is a great starting point for anyone who's just getting into recording. Create yourself a vocal template so every time you start a session you're not starting from ground zero. You kind of already have a great starting point for your vocals. I feel like I said start 5,000 times but yeah definitely create yourself a template. Save it in this little patch area that we talked about earlier so that when you come to write a song and record your vocals you're not starting at ground zero every single time you need to record. Don't be afraid to rely on the presets that come with the stock plugins already built into GarageBand and don't be afraid to venture out and try some cool third-party apps to make your sound even that much more elevated. If you want to dive deeper into some of this GarageBand stuff with me, make sure you check out these videos over here. I will also link them in the description box. Thank you so much for watching. Comment below on anything else you would like me to try out in GarageBand.